Residents here in the Fort Worth suburb of Bedford in northeast Tarrant County have been asked not to use water on lawns today because of an extreme shortage of water. The 100 degree plus temperature each day is not helping overcome the shortage either. I asked Bedford Mayor J.J. Bruner what the situation is now. Fire department in case a fire occurs? Yes, sir, Jim. We never have uh, been in the problem where we uh, were of any danger at all in uh, a lack of fire protection because we've been very careful to maintain reserves for that. But it has put us in a position where we've had to ask all of our people to restrict their use of the water, and uh, most of them have been very cooperative, and for this, we're most appreciative. Mayor Bruner said the problem here should be alleviated in about 21 to 30 days so residents in Bedford can go back to normal use of water. Two new wells are being built here in Bedford. One should be complete in about three weeks. And, of course, we can always hope for a little rain. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move in Bedford. Uh, you know, uh, Rich is, uh, you know, he came in and everything, uh, weighing about 220 pounds. I know last year we didn't start rookie count about the last of August, yeah. but, uh, you know, he looks like he weighed about 230, but, uh, you know, seriously, though, I think he's weighing about 220. You know, he's looking much much better than he did last year when he came in weighing about 230, 235. So I think Rich is looking forward, you know, to this year and everything. There you see, Rich, he said some nice things, didn't he? Yeah, that was pretty good, you know, considering Joe Hamilton here. I think we'll have a real good crop here this year because last year we, you know, we had a lot of small guys run all around the place, and this year I think we have quite a few forward, have large guards, and I think this camp is much better than it was last year. And but I want to see, you know, how many guys will be here at the end of it. I think it's going to run out, come out real well, though. Joe, uh, what are your impressions of your new coach? Uh, coach Nasaki, you know, uh, very impressed with uh, Coach Nasaki. You know, last year I was drafted by Milwaukee. And I got to talk to Coach uh, Nosaki, you know, and I met him and everything, and a tremendous man and a tremendous coach. No, actually, we didn't lose any budget at uh, Dallas. If I view things correctly, we probably have made considerable gains in the, uh, this fiscal year that's coming up. In what way? Well, for example, in the month of May and June, they hired 122 more employees than they had a year before. Um, th this is a sizable gain when you think about employee salaries today. Mm -hmm. What is the operating budget of this facility? Well, everything combined runs about $20 million a year, all programs. Mm -hmm. What about the expansion of the current facility? We're not expanding right now. What we're doing, we're renovating the entire place. This includes the general air conditioning project that's going on at present. We're about half done with that. Uh, they have built an additional wing in the last year. This is not necessarily going to increase the bed capacity. What this will do will provide more clinic space.
and more outpatient treatment areas. Uh, it will give us a little more research room, something that we need here. Jerry, we're real happy to have probably one of the best fields in the Texas area in, in some years. Uh, we have Brian Wilkinson, who is the Kansas champion and Australian. Colin Robertson, who is the Oklahoma champion, also a fellow Australian. We have uh, the number three ranked player in Florida, Jay Leisner, who was the Florida close champion in 1970. We have practically all of the top players from the Texas area coming which is difficult to get them all together on one weekend usually. Uh, Ronnie Fisher, who was ranked number one in 1970, will be here. Uh, the 1971 Texas sectional champion, uh, Paul Christian from Houston, will be here. And also Jack Camrath, who was a finalist in the sectional, will be here. So we feel we've got one of the finest fields that uh, the fans could ask for. Has this ever happened to you in this area before? A number of times. In fact, it is this 4th of July makes three 4th of Julys in a row that this same situation has happened. Not saying anything about the times in between that we've been out of water. Some three weeks ago, we claim they, two weeks ago rather, correction, they claim we had a break in the line on Bell Chapel Road. And a friend of mine traced this line out and he never found a break. It, uh, all we was ever able to figure out that the water got low due to pump failure at that time and they cut us off. So you're collecting water in a garbage pail now uh, each time the water's turned on? Well in the garbage pail and and, and in the um, cans and sewers you know just enough whatever we can get if it stays on long enough still when I'm, we get it. I understand a lot of your neighbors are starting to haul water individually into this area. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yes. We uh, was up on the street up there a while ago, and there was uh, about four came by where they'd already been out and had to go get water. Where do they go to this water? Well, some of them goes to Red Oak, I understand, and then we go to the stations or to a store somewhere, and, and they are real nice and friendly with us, and they give us water.
the problem really took place about Friday, Friday morning it was, early about 2 o'clock in the morning when one of our major lines burst, our 12 inch lines burst, and we lost all of our reserve water. And then of course since then we've been running days of 104 to 106 degrees and uh, our people have used uh, more water than they normally would and it's just put us in a situation where we're producing more water than we ever have in the city of Bedford but it just hasn't been enough to meet the demands of our people. You received some help from Euless, haven't you? Yes, and we're sure thankful for that, too. They've been very cooperative with us, and really this has uh, alleviated our problem right at the moment. They have uh, released one of their wells to us, and we're able to service the two parts of our cities that have been most uh, drastically affected, really. Registration uh, has been suspended at this time until we can uh, see what outcome there will be uh, from the ruling of Judge Taylor uh, next Monday. How long will the registration freeze last? Well, it will last until uh, we can see what uh, the court's ruling may be, and we will convene again and reappraise uh, our position we've taken now in light of what the ruling the judge makes. Approximately how many schools are involved? In the Dallas County area of the Diocese of Dallas, we have approximately 29 schools. Why the influx of these new students? Haven't the schools always been integrated? Yes, the parochial schools in Dallas have always been integrated, but I guess uh, the people are trying to hedge some way in regard to what the judge may rule and try to go to a school close to where they live. How long will it take you to make this change over, Jim? We have the pump on order at this time, and they uh, estimated 10 days delivery on this pump, and approximately two days to install it in the well. What are the people going to be doing for water during this interim period? We're making every effort we can to get water throughout the system. If people will work together on this thing, be conservative, and not water their lawns or their gardens, we'll have water. If, uh, if nothing else, for two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. On integration of schools. The official position uh, uh, would be that our schools have always been integrated. They have never been a, a system for or a haven for segregation. And uh, primarily the school serves the parish uh, within the area where it's located. Uh, other than that, any person that's qualified, regardless of race, creed or color, can enter the Catholic schools. 